Let's talk about trust right now. Now, trust are extremely powerful. I'm going to tell you a little story. There was this lady who was married to this guy who had a trust fund and he got $3,000 a month from his trust fund. They got divorced. She couldn't touch that money. He gave her some, you know, in the beginning, but then she started acting crazy and he completely cut her off. Now, why is this the case? You remember when OJ was going to court and they could not touch his NFL pension in court. There are a few things that are off limits for collections and judgments. Trust funds, and depending on how the way the trust is written up, can be not on the list of things that can be seized. Trust funds, pension plans, RAs. Now, this is for amendments. Now, if you're getting divorced, then those things could very much come into play depending upon how they're written up. But if you want to start a trust fund for your kids, and this is what's so crazy about this, you have to be careful because let's say you start a trust fund for your kid and you get divorced. Well, the court could give her conservatorship over the trust fund that you started, which means she can take the money out and manage the money any way she wants, depending upon how the trust is written up. So what you want to do is make yourself the trustee where you get the money. You know, this is, you know, it's different things. Cause like I said, this is really not going to apply to 99% of the people who take this course because they don't have the money. But one of the things that you can do is make this a goal to get, because once you establish a trust, then it keeps her from getting your money. You can leave money to your kids. You can leave, put them in, take them out. There's all kinds of things, but essentially Having a trust fund and getting money from a trust fund prevents many people from taking money from you from a judgment or if you're sued or something like that. This is why they're like so, so important. Um, how do I get into this? Let's say you wanted you had three million dollars and you want to establish a trust. You can make yourself um, an irrevocable trust which have the most power, but once you set them up, you can't change them. So whatever terms you put in there, that's it. And then there's a revocable trust. So the guy who had the irrevocable trust, she could not get his money. And she just went crazy. You know, he's getting $3,000 a month. If he needs a car, he can go to the executor of trust and get a car. If he needs a house, any major expense, he he went there and got that. And also, I was dating a trust fund baby, and the way her trust was written up, it was between her and her sister. Uh, they got like ten thousand a month a piece if they needed a house or something. I think there was like twelve million in the trust, and they could only draw down so much interest. Uh, whatever was interest, fine, as long as the principal remained intact. So I think it actually grew because the chick I was dating, she didn't take money out for a year. Cause she didn't need it. Cause she's like, I mean, I have a house that's paid for. I have a car that's paid for. And you know, I, I just never spent the 10 grand. She's like, I usually spent two or three grand. And she's like, she had like $180,000 in the bank. So she just didn't take money out to trust. And what happened is it, that money didn't come out. It actually allowed the trust to grow bigger. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to get into because I may bring someone on to talk about this stuff because I don't want to lead you guys in the wrong direction. But essentially, unless you have substantial money or property or something, trust are not going to be the things. But even broke dick Danny can get put on by an LLC. And we'll talk about a lot about that later.